Hello and welcome back to Pillars! And Maya is back in the team. We spent the last few days just uh, having a party in the wild mare and just on, on our ship and whatnot. We made it an imprint to shore leave because we didn't want to leave Maya behind. And uh, apparently she has something to tell us now that she's back. So, <clears throat> uh, what is it? So, we're back. Did you miss us? Nah. What's that, honest? <laughs> of course I miss you, Maya. Where were you? No, that's... Nah. Of course we miss you. I miss you. Well, thanks. It was just me and the bird for a couple of days, and we're sick to death of each other. Something happened out there, and it's got me all turned around. Maya fixes her attention on a distant point. Speak your mind. I... Didn't exactly deliver a missive. That parchment was meant for me, and I delayed opening it as long as I could. She folds her arms. Atsura gave me a name and a location. That was all. When you're, when you're a sharpshooter oh. by trade and your boss doesn't offer clarification, you learn to arrive at your own conclusions. Oh. Don't tell me you shot some of them. Go on. The rub of it is, my target wasn't some ship's captain or an ogre swinging a fence post. He was the Ranga of a Huana tribe. She raises her brow and studies you for any reaction. Maya! Sounds sneaky, tell me more. Why don't you start from the beginning? Not to you, Maya shrugs away some tension. That you hadn't noticed before. The village was beachside. No sign of foreign occupation. I might have been the first outsider to make land in quite a while. They were just simple folk going about their lives. Couldn't have been more than 50 of them. Their Ranga, though? He had a voice that carried, that echoed in the hearts of his people. Her eyes narrow as she concentrates on a far off point. Go on. What did he speak about? He called for unity with the neighboring tribes, the setting aside of bad blood. His people listened, and listened well. He was my target. You can guess what happened next. Tell me anyway. I picked a spot in a time of day. Morning, west facing, plenty of tree cover. The light was in my favor, the winds were low. He left his hut, lost his kid's hair, and set off for the beach on the other side of the island, checking lobster traps. Ishii followed him overhead, and I followed him with my sights, holding my breath, waiting for the right moment. And then I stopped. I pictured all those captains I'd riddled with holes and wondered, is this how we treat civilians? Is this how wars are won? Uh, go on, you spared his life? No, I killed him all right. I shot him in the back of the head. He was a corpse before he hit the ground. It took a while for his kin to find him, but only seconds to figure out that he didn't die of a weak heart. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm sure the hole in his head was compelling evidence. Atsura hired me for my accuracy and because I blend in around here. Not my tidiness. This tribe surprised me. They acted like I kicked over their anthill. They got mad. They got to work. The old Ranga went onto a pyre, and the new one snapped into place. She took up the call for unity while the embers were still warm. Maya shakes her head, grinning a little. Acted like I hadn't just killed her boss for doing the same thing. Did it make a difference to you that Ranga was a civilian? Of course. I shoot to disrupt soldiers and end conflicts. Not to stifle ideas or crush spirits. That's Valian work. Have you been delivering assassination missions this whole time? Fair question. Short answer? I don't know. Atsuri uses different codes for each of us. I could teach myself to write ink with him before I cracked another agent's instructions. So killing the chieftain didn't rattle the tribe? They mourned, they seethed, they tore out their hair, but they rebuilt. How do you know all this? You, you really st stuck ar uh, stick around? 
By the time I left, <clears throat> they were talking about peace with the other tribes like it was inevitable. A slow smile of astonishment rises to her face. To be fair, if... Uh, I, I suppose the Deathfire Company wanted to blame the murder on the other tribes. I, I suppose using a gun wouldn't be the most uh, obvious option, but more like a spear, arrow. What I can learn from this and be more selective next time. Doesn't sound like your mission was a success. I completed my mission. I leave Atsura to worry about whether or not it was a success. Sighing to herself, Maya tugs at her hair bun, wearing a loose lock. If you don't mind, I need to let this brew in my head for a while and see what bubbles up. Thanks for letting me unload in the meantime. We should talk to Atsura. He'll want to know that I've done as he asked. Give me one reason why I shouldn't tell everyone in Deathfire about this. Come on! I've done so many shady things. <clears throat> well, one for sure, you take full blame for that. But am I am I going to kick you off? I had other questions. I don't like the second line. I, I would like to Explore other uh, conversation options. I have other questions. I've got some answers. Hello, Shizu. Who's a good bird? Now, that's just dumb. Let's be off. Okay, so do we have a mission to report into Atsura? Now that Maya's target is eliminated, Atsura will want to report of our progress. So we can go there. All right. Uh, what's the fastest way to leave this, uh, area? Whatever, let's do the east exit. That's appropriate hey, anyway. Whoa, what are you doing? Spring. Everybody go. <clears throat> Not just watch her. I know you can run fast, but come on. Jesus. You're just showing off. So let's go to the Brass Citadel. Yeah, I suspected that they are Imperial Command lower. Yeah, let's go there. That's where Atsura is. You're traveling the streets of Nekataka when you hear a familiar voice nearby. Who? As you follow the winding streets of Nekataka, the usual city sounds of cart uh, wheels against cobbles and shouting vandal fades, replaced by the cacophony of a heated argument over the verge of boiling over. Uh, one of the voices rings familiar, Ram Dang Grigory from the Defiant. Approach the commotion! As you round the corner, you see Ram Dang Grigory surrounded by a group of unfamiliar soldiers. From their dress, you don't believe they are locals. <clears throat> They shout at Ramdan Rigri. <sighs> That's a long name. Who returns the yelling with interest, though you can't make out the actual matter of the argument. One of the sailors shoves Ram against the wall and the hand of another tug lingers dangerously near his weapon. Dumb eyes uh, meet yours and widen. Captain, thank the gods, I could use a hand here. Okay. Oh. You should teach your sailors better manners. This sudden fool got sick all over our boots. Your compatriots nod, I searching. Perhaps you coins will clear this all up? I'm sorry about my mate's behavior, but I can't let you make them unfit to serve. I don't suppose an apology would. Like a, like a minor negative. Apology? <clears throat> the sailors look uh, to one another and the one nods. She looks at Rum. Uh, let's hear it. Uh, he gives you a sad glance, then looks back to the woman. Sorry, ma'am. What was that? The other sailors snicker. Sorry, ma'am. The woman salutes you, then turns on her heel. The sailors walk away. Be more careful next time. Yes, Captain. Okay, sure. 
yeah, back to the uh, Imperial Command lower. That's where we were going. Damn the distractions. We don't have time for this rum dum riggery. I don't know, there are no factions that I can just say like, Oh, I really like these guys. This is not conflicting whatsoever. I don't know what faction would I... Well, <clears throat> I, I suppose uh, some factions like me more than others, but... There are no faction that would say like, Oh, I really love them. I can fully get behind them. I get along fine with yeah, him. Yeah, Clear skies. Maya has business with you. Indeed. I hope we return victorious. He turns to her with a bold, almost confrontational stare. A look that seems to mirror her own. It's done in any case. I'll leave you to decide what victory means. Atsura, care to explain? What have you been up to? Maya has been assisting with plans to work toward peace in some of the more tumultuous parts of Deadfire. He raises his eyebrows, looking back to her. Oh, peace to some. Peace to all. One day. He stares her down with a challenge in his eyes. I'm certain Harama would agree. He's well, after all, thanks to your decisive action. He cocks his head. Twaha reports success and sends her thanks for your swift intervention. You have aided your countrymen with distinction. There is no higher honor to which a trencher may ascribe. He tilts his head towards her, emphasizing his words. But what of your own assignment? You send Maya to kill a man. He shifts his gaze to you. For a most noble cause, I assure you. You've always been self-sufficient and resolute in purpose, Maya. It surprises me that you should discuss your orders so freely. Cargo shifts on long journeys no matter how tightly you tie it down, sir. At ease. When it comes down to it, I know you will always do what must be done. He pauses, fixing her with his strange, unwavering gaze. Rawatai values your service, as do I. And I can think of no better reward for the rough country's finest sharpshooter than a piece such as this. Reduce base damage, attacks in line, maximum free targets. Um, that's garbage. I won't keep you. I know you both have plenty of business to attend to. Are we talking about the same Atsura? I feel like I should set the record straight. Go on. I didn't get into this business so I could shoot first in a battle that hadn't even started, you know? I know the Ranganui wants to see results, but I never thought any of us would be complicit in something like assassination. You see... Like, that's 1% on you. But that's just how you gotta think about it. If you're no longer comfortable with the orders you're given, you, ha you just have to walk away. Or... At least, I suppose. We're shooting at people with dangerous ideas, and assuming the ideas will die with them. What a sentiment from an expert marksman. I take it you never ask these sort of questions about fighting with the navy. It's a little different when the enemy's ship is turning about, their cannons glinting like a spider's eyes. You don't find time for a lot of deep ethical discussions. <clears throat> Find a sentiment from an expert marksman. Funny depends on where you're standing, I guess. I can see attacking a fortress or an enemy ship. I can see taking aim at the soldier wearing the tallest hat. I killed a chieftain for spreading good ideas. It's not the same thing. If my talent with a gun caused anyone to think that a bullet is a one-size-fits-all problem solver, that says more about them than it does about me. You sound ambivalent. Ishiz is a good listener, but he's too dumb to offer much perspective. <laughs> I could use some of yours right about now. I'm concerned that assassination sets the wrong precedent. Bullets are cheaper than armies. You're sparing lives and resources. <clears throat> that is right. You know. That is right, but I'm not committed to the... 
The Deadfire Trading Company. This is hard path to defend. History won't be kind. Realty can compete with value and funds. Principi numbers with one of power. I'm concerned that assassination sets the wrong precedent. You're saying maybe this isn't a memory we want to take home. Nodding to herself, Maya seems less thoughtful and more resolved. <clears throat> she cracks her neck and rolls her shoulder, letting out a relief sigh. You could be right. If we let this sort of thing spin out of control, it won't do us any good in the long run. If we go out Sura's way, we had better be sure that killing the right people makes a difference. Damn sure. And if we fall back on what we know, cannons, sieges, occupation, we had better commit to fighting a moving target. We won't succeed if we don't understand the tribes. And something tells me that we aren't there yet. The tribes have the entire archipelago as their own ba their battleground. I'm sure the Navy would love to test their might against a challenge. Even if Atsura is worried about the cost. <sighs> Let's be off. <clears throat> Alright guys, so we need to leave this city, finally, by sea. Hopefully. I'm just coming back to Nekataka. And I hate the whole thing. Before venturing forth. This is perfect. There are no factions like, ooh, which one I like a little bit more? No. You hate every single one of them. They're all devious, backstabbing, murderers, more like it. That even the smaller factions could actually just uh, turn out that way if they actually got the power. So let's see. Out of all the factions, well, I suppose I have a. a this is basically the Juana in general. Okay. I wouldn't really call that a, a much of a faction, but sure. <clears throat> Children of the Dawn Stars, they love me. I just make fun of them, but yeah, that's good. Slavers, uh, right where I want them. Mikataka. Okay. Tikawara village. Principi. <clears throat> yeah, I might want them over here. The gullet. Well, we're in the positive. We did kill the criminal underworld. Real Death Fire Company kind of likes me. Delver's Rule Criminals. Valiant Trading Company hates me. Port Maya. Oh, that's a nice place. Kind of. There are no factions that would say like, Oh yeah, I love those guys. Can we just sail out? If I see. We can't. We need to go to the... Queen's Bert. Ah, <sighs> okay. We need to use the exit. <clears throat> Sail out of this town. I don't like it. I don't want to go into any of the buildings. I just want to get the hell out of Nikataka. We had enough of this place. <clears throat> the thing is, if I try to take power, I probably would end up um, not exactly Perhaps not exactly like them, but would be somewhat considered to be like them. Maybe worse. But still. Damn. Okay, we just gotta go. That looks cool. Oh yeah, we upgraded the... Okay, can we just supply? Can we buy a better ship? The Voyager. Sail health, minimum crew 5, dole. That's very minor. Steel anchor. Travel speed, combat speed. 
Sail health. Travel speed, but less sail health. Sounds good to me. Combat speed only. We already have Arcane Lanterns that increases our travel speed. We can buy one of these sails, travel speed. Look at the price of that thing! Really? Increases the travel speed. Lowers the combat. Oh, no, no. Actually, lowers the travel speed and combat speed, but gives us more hull. That's not saying a lot. Oh, Mage Weave sales, travel speed, combat speed, sail half. That's just totally fine. Now that's the best one, but it's also st stupidly expensive. Voyager. Junk. I suppose the best thing about the junk is the hit chance. Wait. Your chance of getting hit? Or your chance of hitting with the cannons? Yeah, I think that could be it. I think it's your chance of getting hit, no? 55. Let's buy the sail. Can we upgrade the ship with that sail that we just bought? Sail. Where are you? Yes. Oh, actually, I already had one. Combat speed. Actually, that doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, let's go with that. And leave the city. By sea. And we gotta go northeast. What are we gonna do northeast? I don't know. We gotta see. I like cruising with the Defiant. Small, sturdy ship. Do I, wanna, do I really wanna go with like a, something like a Voyager? Something bigger. <clears throat> so, wait a second. Who is that guy? Widla? You wanna die? Unaffiliated. Hey, Widla. What's up? Unaffiliated Doe. Is this the person who we need to talk to? Oh yeah, we have a mission to... To pay Vidla and uh, return that... Whatever she has, we're gonna... Bring up north somewhere. A long sleek uh, hip ship rides low in the water. Its crew stands uh, protectively around a cluster of crates positioned on the main deck. A woman saunters across the deck, her roughly chopped hair swinging with her stride. We said or not, Perrin. <sighs> we are. <sighs> I'd happily tell you if you stopped interrupting my count. She cackles and thumps him on the back. He staggers forward and shoots her a venomous glare. You've had days to count. Now it's time we talked about the price. She turns her attention to you, eyes gleaming. Perrin follows her gaze. We've had some complications. The price is doubled. Do you know who I'm representing? Vidla is a little too fast to respond, almost as if she's trying to stop you from saying more. I know they've got the cash. Then you also know they got guns, and you want them to be happy with this deal. Fine. One thousand it is. Why did you raise the price? Don't act insulted. I've heard enough to know you'd do the same. 
Let's just say there are other folks who'd be happy to pay my price. You mean the Valiant Trading Company? What matters is I'm giving you the chance to buy it first. You won't be in business long if you treat contacts this way. That's the point. I don't want to be in it long. I want to fill my hold with cash and retire early. Sounds good. There's plenty of business for enterprising sorts in Deadfire. And I have arrangements with every major power in the archipelago. Had. Or don't you remember? I'll remember this when I'm doling out rations tonight if you don't shut your mouth. Well, I'm not paying. Her eyebrows quick and surprised. You ought to reconsider. Else we'll be forced to relieve you of what you have. We can try. Adam! This is the way to actually make a good deal. Chain lightning? Sure. What are you doing? Daddy have no chance. Oh yeah, let's Okay, time to kill him. Don't charm him. Oh. Are we gonna loot? Superb! Good thinking. What do we have here? Several crates now bloodstained are stacked together. Take the crates and sail away. Your crew holds the crates aboard, stepping carefully around the bodies. Well, <clears throat> there was a disagreement. <laughs> I guess she was right. She wasn't in it long. As your crew hold the smugglers' crates below decks, one of them shouts in alarm. Little Luca finds you in your cabin. Captain, come quick! Someone just popped out of one of those crates we picked up. Before you can eject, Little Luca leads you above deck. Hey, uh, you wanna die too? Who are we smuggling? Are we smuggling? At this point, is, is it really considered smuggling? Who's gonna stop us? We destroyed every single ship in the death fire. With the, the exception of one uh, merchant ship that we can't touch for some reason. A plump middle-aged woman stands uh, beside the crates. Her clothing is rumpled and her hair matted. But her eyes twinkle with triumph. Gilarde, 23 days! This is a new record! She smells of stale urine. Holds fat and worse, but she beams at you all the same. Congratulations, I'm sure that's really great. It is more than great. It is the successful test of my newest spell, Renove Miseris. She speaks the name of as proudly as if it belonged to her first burn. Renewal of air? Ark? Just so. Kith have explored every mountain in the Eastern Reach, yet the realm of fish and leviathans remains close to us. It has been my dream to open these steps to discovery, to let Kith breathe as the fishes do. Or at least to let us use the air of a single breath again and again. I still don't understand why you had to hide in a crate. Neither do I. But Okaya, she thinks maybe the ducks will not be so happy to let me go. At least it gave me plenty of time to test my work. Why go to Sayuka? Why leave the Valian Republics? Back home they care only for profit, and there is little profit to be had in sticking your head in the glass bucket to watch the fish. I believe you. 
but the Rawa Taians, they have vision. They chase greater things than gold. So I go to work with them. Let me get this straight. You've been perfecting a spell that recycles air and you'll use it to help the Ratayans make something big? So you do understand. I suppose. But I can say no more. The Ratayans, they have sworn me to secrecy. What exactly are you to be working on at Sayuka? Sintere, but I had promised not to say. That's all I yes, suppose. I have much to do. Many more tests to run before we reach Sayuka. A pleasure talking, Captain. You're very welcome to go back to the box. Hmm. Okay. It's like a thousand copper, a lot of money. I guess she was just being smuggled. But I, okay. We're going to Sayuka. What? I have two injured crew? Who? Oh, those are the extras. Alright, so you can. Can we go to somewhere specific? So I think we can go to the Fleet Master uh, quarters right away. Perhaps uh, that's where we need to return our. Surprise guest. Hey, Fleet Master Kaya. A pleasure to see you well, Watcher. You found me with a rare spare moment. Uh, ha Hazanai Karu asked me to deliver some cargo to you. I have received a report from the Dock Master stating as much. The Royal Deadfire Company appreciates your swift delivery of our cargo. Your smuggler, Vidla, attacked me. <laughs> ah, that's unfortunate. Though not entirely unexpected. She unlocks the drawer and desk and takes out the large coin purse. Silently, she slides it across the desk top to you. Only 800? They expected me to pay 1000 to the smuggler. I've received a report from the dock master stating as much. The Royal Deadfire Company appreciates your swift delivery of our cargo. I don't know, you didn't say I'd be ferrying a human. Why would she? You're a courier. What the hell? In any event, the Hazanui's missive suggested you might be able to help us with an issue at port. Go ahead. You may have noticed the outsized coral in the harbor. Yep. There's something unnatural about the coral's growth, about everything on this island. And no matter how we trim it back, it only grows larger. My engineers deduce that the origin of this disturbance is somewhere off the coast of Sayuka, and I'd like you to investigate. Talk to Avera in the workshop if you care to learn more. I would be grateful for your help here, Watcher. Okay, so I guess we gotta talk with them in the workshop. Hmm. I'm taking a lot of detours before we go and uh, take out Eotas, I suppose. Or not sure what's gonna happen with Eotas. But I, I suppose I'm rather furrow at this point. Sayuka at last! I must go. Discovery awaits. Agrasima, Captain. Ah. See ya, Vera. So, I think that's beyond. we gotta go into the workshop, have a little chat. Hey, what's up with the party order? It's completely different. You sure? Something like that. So, Ivera? No. When you first enter the workshop, you find the Valian scientist, Devera, and the large Omana man in heated conversation. He gestures wildly, his mouth is set in a hard grimace that bears his pointed teeth. Ivara regards him with her hands planted firmly on her hips. When he spots you, his eyes widen. You! This area is strictly off-limits to non-company personnel! 
What are you doing here? Calm, my Miko. Is this not the casita your Asanui said she would send? That's me. How can I help? Praise be. The coral in the harbor is growing out of control, and we've found no way to stop it. We're at our wit's end. I've surmised that a magical disturbance must be the source of the problem. So far as I can tell, the most likely candidate is a strange magical signature emanating from some place off the southeast coast of the island, deep beneath the sea. The Juana's records show that an ancient and Guithan ruin, Signath Moor, once stood at that approximate location. I do not doubt that something in that ruin is the source of the trouble. Thurguono, take this. It is my masterpiece, Ak. Thanks. Hope you didn't piss on it. The helmet should allow you to breathe underwater for time enough to deal with the disturbance, provided, of course, that you hurry. Um. I'm making my top priority. The Royal Deadfire Company thanks you for your assistance, Watcher. And your bravery. Aura Taugori. I guess choosing Watcher as as the name of my character was a good way to actually be called uh, <laughs> my name. Watcher. Signat Moor. So, Southeast? As far as I recall, there's only one place that we didn't really check out South, well, Southeast. Not for the lack of, uh, not because I didn't wanna, but because But because it was not possible to actually go there. So I don't know where this Sigmund Moore is. What? Oh. I see. I thought they were somehow t talking about Splinter Drift. <laughs> well, that's southeast as well. You arrive at the location of uh, the coast of Sayuka that uh, the coral mason told you about. You peer over the edge of your ship and see a faint glow in the waters far, far below. Don your diving suit and swim down. You clamber into the diving suit and leap from your boats, hitting the water with a, a tremendous splash. You swim toward the light, breathing fresh air thanks to Ivara's invention. As you fall through the depths, the water grows dark, but the glow below you even brighter, ever brighter. Schools of gigantic fish twist and swirl around you, paying you no heed. Soon enough you can make out the vague shape of a structure resting on the sleep floor. Rising from the ruins of Signat Moor is a tall spire and what appears to be a small landing platform. When you finally reach the spire, you find that a shimmering barrier surrounds the ruins. You pass your hand through the barrier and feel nothing but a tingle like static electricity across your skin. Let's pass through the barrier. You walk through the barrier and discover the interior of the ruins aren't flooded as you might have expected, but dry. You remove your helmets, take a deep breath of fresh air and walk into the ruins of Signal Moor. With the entire party? We only got one suit! Uh, did my companions just hold their breath? Or am I just gonna be by myself? Also, if we only send one guy, it should be that there. Because he's... He's such a... They got air down here somehow, but I wouldn't mind if it smelled like something besides rotten fish. Mm. He's the most athletic guy we got. What? Let's go! Ha! Right between the eyes! Signed Winder. And range of the fat. Still got it. Rest in peace. Hey, 
That wasn't half bad. Ah, oh, Ulu fan. I actually considered taking out uh, the smaller charms. Water leaks through a crack in the window. Come on, guys. What is this? Pool of water? Well, I would have never figured that one out. Interesting place. And the luck with is here. My fingers be fat and swapped in. Okay, lock difficulty sixteen. So our lock picking. Of 21 is coming, uh, and machine is old and salty. Figure it'd be twice like to break, is not okay. Fancy machines. I guess we perhaps needed to get some, uh, tools. Or I don't know, some information for it. Now we just got in right away. Who knows? Maybe you need the mechanic of 16 just to get him. A small plaque below the mural reads. Divining Serpent was our first success. Born of the common Barracuda, we subjected the creature to the machine's vital energies, and it grew to immense proportions. It has since appeared to have developed something of a group of mentality, often hunting in packs. Is what? Is that it? Okay, what we got here? The Leviathan was a folly born in, of purest hubris. After our experience with the uh, barbed ravager, we decided to test the limits of the machine's uh, growth capabilities. We entrapped a pod of blue whales and subjected them to the machine for months on end. Only a few of them, few of the creatures survived, but those that did, they could not be contained. Why do I feel like this is gonna be a? There's gonna be a quiz. Because I'm not paying like a crazy amount of attention. Well, like, I don't know. I'm not really making notes. You, you find the small machine uh, sitting on a dais surrounded by a spinning ring. It appears to be uh, of inquitant origin. Examine the machine. You know the speed of the ring rotation and the subtle pattern of the machine's humming. After a bit of uh, prodding, the pylons working uh, makes sense to you. I can We can deactivate the machine. You shut down the machine, the floating ring grinds to a halt, and the energy it emits uh, wings out of existence. A low rumbling echoes through the ruins, and the barrier on the window nearest you flickers briefly. Small trickles of water begin to flow nearby. Was this wise? Maybe not. I try to not ask those questions. I might just, uh, it, it does hurt my self confidence. What's this? Oh, we're in slug zone. Uh oh. After him. Sorry. Building beam began. They took some damage. So we do know that they have they have some kind of a machine that helps them grow. At least uh, creatures. I suppose it's not that much of a leap to assume that. It can be used for any, something else as well. The AOE of this thing is just so crazy. No! Come now, step 
Sweet redemption. Trolls? What are these people, uh, these creatures eating down here? No problem. Some key. Sure. Won't work. Cave coral, sure. Spider sponge. Can't do it. More trolls. Let me just uh use that on them. Still got it. Actually, because of the stupidly high fortify he has, it's not gonna work, right? Now we already used it. They have low reflex. So this is... Is this fortify based? A fortitude based? Yeah, it is. So we need something with reflex here. Can we just do a uh, Calicots freezing? Uh, not on our team. Not on our team. That's the very important part here. Something it didn't do a lot. See, Troll's gonna die. I need to blow up the sigil. Bloody slug zone. My fingers be fat and furry. Huh? Easy breezy wet and sleep. Okay. Think Tough place. Me. What did he find? Uh. Fine pike. That's rather disappointing. Anything in here? The Barb Ravager was the direct result of our success with the Winding Serpent. We grafted poisonous barbs onto bull sharks and subjected them to the machine's energies. The creatures tripled, then quadrupled in size, assimilating the barbs into their bodies, and so a most fearsome predator was born. Let's deactivate the machine. Why not? Hmm. Come, guys. Leave it to me. Log of fat. I'm just kind of wondering how evolved. I not evolved like. How technologically advanced were the Ingwittens at the time? Because this place seemed to suggest that, well, assuming Ingwittens are responsible for this, but that's most likely the case. Because this place seemed to suggest that, like, this wasn't done with magic, so... Uh, they just, uh... And getting to the point where you can actually just uh, make animals. Well, not that easy. It's not quite like making some cannons. The wall before you is decorated by an intricately painted mural depicting four sea creatures of legend. Inspect the mural. The mirror features a kraken, a shark covered in wicked barbs, an enormous whale, a knot of uh, free serpents with the heads of barracudas. The images, the images are offset somewhat from their frames, as if they 
could be pressed. Uh, can you mess it up? Serpent. Ah. Uh, shark. Uh. Whale. Kraken. So I suppose the information about them wasn't as important important as just simply knowing the order they were created. Grant's gaff. Reach out to pull a distant target to the wielder, dealing slash pierce damage and dazing them. Some exceptional spear. Thanks for that. So... You can shut down the pilot and check out the Inguitum machine. Yeah, Ingwitten, of course, obviously. She's a wait for us! We can't fly! Okay, maybe shut this down first. Quest updated. <clears throat> water floods into ruins. You have just enough time to pull out your diving suit before the water crest your head. Though you are in no danger of drowning, you are not yet safe. The rumbling deep in the ruins doesn't subside, but instead grows louder by the moment. You dart out the window opposite uh, the pylon and uh, start the long swim up to your waiting ship. Part way up to the surface, you notice that it's getting harder and harder to take full breaths, and the bulk of the diving suit is now starting to weigh you down. Something is very wrong with it. Shrug off the suit and make a mad dash for the surface. Oh boy, that's not gonna work. It worked? Jesus. That's because of the bonuses. One self plus nine party assist. Holy crap. Yeah, the party actually likes athletics quite a bit. You swim for the first surface as fast as you can, feeling exposed now without the diving suit. Eventually you see light up above, just as you begin to see spots in your vision. You finally break the surface and gulp down fresh air before clambering aboard your ship. Well, I did it, guys. Uh, I lost the suit. By the way, it was, a. Uh, you know, it was not the best. But it's done, so I suppose that's all that matters. I, I hope. Let's go into the workshop. It's a bit of a bummer that we didn't check out the big crystal first. Damn. So we can go to Hetu. Stay out of the way. Or not. Ah, so much to do. What? Oh. Two hours in the day. I guess we're going back to Fleet Buster Ukaya. I just assumed that I need to report to them now, uh, considering that they gave me the suit and the mission. You're giving Ishii a weird look. What did he do? I'm not giving him a weird look. He's giving me a weird look. Fleet Master Ukaya, let's talk. I hope your effort to resolve the coral situation is meeting with success. I was not able to solve the co your coral problem, and now the ruins are no longer accessible. What? Uh. Damn. Who are you? Did you not read the name on the door before you came in? You. Ah. I'm a fleet master of the Rawatayan Navy Station. I see. You found me with a rare spare moment. <sighs> I wasn't able to solve your core problem, and now the ruins are no longer accessible. Okaya grits her teeth, a vein in her forehead pulses so intensely it looks like it should hurt. Then she balls her hand into a fist, closes her eyes, and releases a deep sigh. I can't say I'm not disappointed. Now we'll have to make do without proper coral defenses. 
will be vulnerable. At least the coral will be as inconvenient to any attackers as it to you. People have cannons, Watcher. She narrows her eyes, searching your face a hint of joke you must surely be telling. Ah, before I forget, Atsura would like to see you at the Brass Citadel. Would he now? Okaya pauses, her hand outstretched like uh, she meant to pull you aside, then reconsiders with a shake of her head. Uh, she continues. Though he appears placid on the surface, Atsura is not a patient man. Great. Should we go back to Atsura? I don't know. I wanna sail out. Okay, maybe not. Okay, we need to see the big map. Leave the town by sea. I wanna go northeast. Go back to Bikarno's uh, observatory. Hunt ships. Kill some dumb fire giants who sail with ships. What? Why are those there? Should I go and kill them all? <laughs> I don't know. They're not supposed to be there. Should they? Hmm. Alright. Bog. I already dealt with the bog. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Have a good one.